The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12195 in the name of Colin Beatty on the importance of libraries. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I now call on Colin Beatty to open the debate. Mr Beatty, you have seven minutes, but before you do, I do just invite those members who are leaving the chamber and indeed those who are leaving the public gallery to do so quickly and quietly, please. Mr Beatty. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I must begin with a confession. I'm a bookaholic. And from a very early age in my hometown of Forfar, I was a member of the local library. I couldn't afford to buy the books myself, but the local library opened a window into a new world. Somehow I found time to read several books a week. Books on fiction and reality were all grist to the mill. My vocabulary improved, and I learned about places and peoples from across the world. And indeed, in those days, when even television was limited, and before the internet, this was the only real way to discover the world we lived in. I never loved, lost my love of reading, nor my love of books, and it must surely be a coincidence that uh, I married a fellow book junkie, which compounded the problem. And as years passed, we collected more and more books until now our house groans under the weight of about 8,000 books. And one day I will go through them and I'll dispose of those that are duplicated and so on, but for the moment, it's one-way traffic. So you can imagine I feel strongly about libraries uh, and their importance and their place in our communities. And I believe that libraries still represent a vital route to learning and development not just through the, the conventional supply of reading books, but for all the added value services, such as hearing books, CDs, DVDs, internet access, and all the rest. Libraries have played a, a vital role in our history. They've been part of Scottish culture for centuries, and some Scottish universities can trace the history of their libraries back to the 15th century. Of course, these university libraries were st for students and faculty only. The general public had no access, and indeed, the ruling class was not particularly keen that the ordinary man be educated. It wasn't until the 19th century, when the Public Libraries Act was passed, that local communities were allowed to build public libraries that offered free access, and so giving citizens the right to inform themselves from the information that libraries provided. Now, a huge boost came in the form of Andrew Carnegie, who recognized libraries as one of the best ways in which he could give back. And as a young boy, Andrew Carnegie understood the importance of libraries which is why, when he was unable to pay the $2 price for a library card, he wrote to the library administrator in protest. The administrator denied his request for a free access to the library, so he had his letter published in the local paper. And eventually the library caved in to the public pressure brought on by the letter and opened its doors to working men and apprentices. And it should be no surprise to learn that Andrew Carnegie regarded his experience with reading and libraries as one of the keystones of his success. And he saw public libraries as essential for the future success of any community. Now, during his lifetime, he funded the building of over 2,800 libraries worldwide. And the first was established in Scotland in 1883 in his hometown of Dunfermline. Now, many more Scottish Carnegie libraries from Dumfries to Aberdeen followed, all of which helped their individual communities by offering invaluable information to those who had previously no access to books. Now, currently, we have over 500 public libraries in Scotland, all of which are places where members of our communities can go and enjoy library facilities free of charge. And the tradition of genuinely free public libraries is now almost two centuries old, but in a way it finds itself at risk because across the UK, libraries are disappearing and some people are actually asking what the purpose of having libraries is actually for. Now, between 2008 and 2013, 3.6% of Scottish libraries were closed. Now, although these numbers are not welcome, they're still much smaller than the other numbers from around the UK, with 7.9% of libraries in England, 11% in Wales, and 11.5% in Northern Ireland closing their doors. Now, these closures are often done as a result of pressure on councils to make cuts, but I fear that sometimes local councils are a wee bit too eager in the closing of publicly funded libraries. However, there is a, a small number of people as I said, who wonder why in this digital age of laptops and tablets do we need st stacks of old, dusty books? And this assertion is usually addressed when you realise that our modern-day libraries are much more than just stacks of books. Scottish libraries are community centres which have kept their original tradition of embracing equality without regard to income or background and so have continued through the generations to allow 
those from all backgrounds to come, learn, and enjoy. Children of all age can pick up a book for free and read, and it's an important service for those coming from lower-income families who would otherwise have no place to access such materials and no place to expand their imagination and knowledge. Under libraries help people understand their, or improve their understanding of the world. They offer public meeting places where people with common interests or needs can come together, where people searching for a social group to belong to can find one. Another essential service is, of course, the access to free Wi-Fi and computers, which is crucial for those who are disadvantaged or low income, or who, like the 39% in my constituency of Midlothian, do not have access to internet in their own homes. For these Scottish citizens, libraries are vital, and this addition of free Wi-Fi and computer in, in the Scottish libraries is proof that our libraries continue to adapt and evolve to better meet the needs of our communities. I do recognise that access to the vast information available on the internet has in some ways replaced the need for students and researchers to rummage through piles of books at libraries or to find facts and data. But in a world where every two days we create more data than was created from the beginning of human history up to 2003, it's important that there is a place where we can find this information, where it's organised and stored and where there are experts available to guide you through it free of charge. Now, Throughout my constituency, uh, National Library Day of February 7th has been celebrated and libraries across the country and in my constituency have been very much involved in celebrating that with a diverse number of services and activities. Book groups for all age have discussed and created in areas through the country. Many special visits from famous authors took place who read and discussed their works with Scottish communities. Harry Potter night celebrations were held. iPad tutorials were given. And in my constituency, a Build a Biscuit City activity was held for children at the Dalkeith Library. In addition, the same library provided a textiles workshop in which knitting, crochet and needle felt were taught. National Library Day 2015 was a great success for all of the participating libraries, and I trust it will continue to be so in the years to come. Now, no debate in our libraries would be complete without highlighting the staff who work in these libraries. Librarians and their staff are in a unique position supporting our communities and continuing this tradition of dedicated services which we all benefit from. Without them and their commitment, our libraries would not be the success they are. Presenting officer, all of us in this chamber and across Scotland have a responsibility to ensure a secure future for public libraries. Libraries need our support and it's our responsibility to provide that support and so to protect their future in Scotland. Many thanks. <clears throat> we are very, very tight for time today, so if people can limit themselves to uh, four minutes or thereby, I'd be very grateful. Call on uh, Stuart Maxwell to be followed by Hansala Malik. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Presenting officer, Andrew Carnegie famously said that a library outranks any other one thing a community can do to benefit its people. It is a never-failing spring in the desert. Like many others, I share Andrew Carnegie's passion about the importance of libraries. So I'd like to give my thanks to Colin Beattie for securing today's valuable debate. The 7th of February marked National Library Day, an opportunity for all of us to celebrate the contribution that libraries make to communities across Scotland. In East Renfrewshire, where I live, in my own region, National Library Day coincided with the opening of brand new library facilities at the Barhead Foundry. Since its opening, the Barhead Foundry has quickly become a real community hub for local residents, offering first-class library services alongside enhanced sports facilities, business resource centre, digital services and a cafe. The new home of Barhead Library offers a range of services for people of all ages and includes a great collection of books and other resources. Across the country, we see public libraries like this one at the heart of communities, giving people the chance to enhance their learning and develop a passion for reading. The Cabinet Secretary for Culture has previously highlighted the key role that libraries play in overcoming barriers to literacy and educational attainment. Now, a few weeks ago, I spoke in the debate on educational attainment and outlined some of the work being undertaken by the Education and Culture Committee in this area. Evidence from the 2009 Programme for International Student Assessment Survey suggests that increasing reading engagement has the potential to reduce approximately 30% of the attainment gap associated with poverty. It's clear that libraries have a vital role to play in breaking the link between poverty and educational attainment, especially as studies show that children from poorer backgrounds tend to have fewer books at home and are less likely to be read to by their parents. It's important that we get as many young people as possible engaged with reading from an early age. 
So I'm delighted that the Scottish Government has introduced a pilot scheme to look at ensuring that every child is automatically given membership of their local library. The project has been run by the Scottish Library and Information Council with the support of the Scottish Government's Public Library Improvement Fund. And I look forward to hearing the outcome of the pilot scheme once it's complete. I also very much welcome other initiatives introduced by the Scottish Government to encourage reading and improve literacy standards, including Book Week Scotland, the Play Talk Read campaign, and recently announced Read, Write, Count initiative. Presiding officer, I'd like to conclude by focusing on the provision of school library services, an issue that the Scottish Library and Information Council has been looking at in great detail recently. Research carried out by Professor Dorothy Williams of Robert Gordon University has found considerable evidence of the positive impact that school libraries have on learning. Professor Williams found that school libraries not only contribute to better educational attainment, they also help to successfully deliver curriculum outcomes and promote positive attitudes to literacy and reading. My own daughter, when she went to secondary, was a beneficiary of this very uh, process. Going along as a new pupil to a secondary school, nervous as you are, she went to the library and found a place which not only was full of books, but was a place to meet friends and also to join book clubs, get a book buddy, and also to have teachers and the librarian in particular, a professional librarian who helped her to help herself with her own literacy and expand her own reading capacity. Now, I was greatly concerned to learn that some local authorities have brought forward proposals to reduce the provision of full-time professional librarian services in schools, particularly in light of the Scottish Government's focus on tackling the educational attainment gap. The Read On, Get On report published last year suggested that 40% of families from the poorest households had fewer than 10 children's books at home. Studies also suggest that a significant proportion of children do not visit public libraries, so the only place that many children are exposed to books is at school making the service offered by professional school librarians even more important. I would therefore like to conclude by asking the Cabinet Secretary if she could outline the Scottish Government's view on the importance of school library services and their role in raising attainment and literacy levels amongst children. Presenting officer, libraries have been a vital educational tool for ordinary people for over a century. Let's make sure we support and maintain our public libraries and our school libraries. Many thanks. Now call on Hans Alan Malik to be followed by Cameron Buchanan. Thank you very much and good afternoon, Presiding Officer. I would like to thank Colin Beattie for um, submitting this uh, motion today. As a previous City Councillor and now as a parliamentarian, I have seen firsthand the, provi the provision offered effects, the, the provision effects of 33 Glasgow City libraries in Glasgow. Their pupil their public institutions play such an important role in providing equal access of information, service, and media, especially to people of low-income households who are often denied access to internet, Wi-Fi, which is so important in today's world. Scotland's libraries offer 8.5 million hours of free internet access each year. Scotland has prided itself on education and literacy since the 18th century. It is through our libraries that we continue this great tradition by providing people free access to information in books and online and other medias like CDs, films, music, and Braille, not to exclude foreign languages uh, with the same sort of services provided to people, and including newspapers from overseas. Libraries have um, been a chance with, with libraries have begun to change with the time uh, to better match the needs of the public. An exam, exemplary example of the provision of libraries is to, to partnership with Glasgow Libraries and Macmillan Cancer Services. Macmillan through Glasgow Libraries has begun to offer access to local community based cancer information and support services to the people of Glasgow. Yes. John Mason. I'm grateful for the member giving way. He mentioned his Glasgow. Would he also welcome examples like uh, in the bridge where the, the library serves the public and the college and the swimming pools in the same venue? Absolutely. I think these are just some of the, the good examples that we have in and around Scotland. And this is just one way of which libraries can utilise a better community and serve the community better around them. I welcome the 
celebration of the National Library Day, which was on 5th of, 7th of February. Since then, we pride our libraries in Glasgow. Whilst we celebrate the National uh, Library Day, we must work hard to ensure that we maintain our libraries. We must make sure that local authorities are funded to ensure the library services continue and that they provide the provision that they not only have, but also they should actually increase the facility that they currently provide. One of the things that is quite important is quite frequently local authorities are use the excuse of relocation in terms of closing libraries down. That has to change. We need to be more serious of how we provide our libraries to the communities around us. Attaching libraries to schools, colleges, universities is a good example. And also when we are rebuilding libraries in areas, what we should not do is ensure that we do not allow the erosion of the service that's currently provided to the citizens right around Scotland. I think that uh, uh, many people have experienced uh, good services through libraries. We wish to continue to do those. And attaching themselves to the educational institutions, particularly schools, I think will ensure the introduction to libraries to younger people at a very early age who would benefit the most. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Thank you. <clears throat> now call Cameron Buchanan to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I commend Colin Beattie for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Libraries are very clearly one of the most important assets within any community for a whole variety of reasons, and celebrating their work is also an important duty of any elected member, not least because they are so many preciously regarded by the, because they are so preciously regarded by the majority of our constituents. National Library Day therefore gives us and them the perfect opportunity. Of course, there are many different types of libraries these days, and they can no longer be viewed in quite the same way as they once were. Bastions of silence presided over by formidable-looking librarians who would not countenance the, even the slightest degree of inappropriate decorum from the reading public. I remember at school being terrified by our school librarian who wanted a reason for every book we took out, so we never took out any books referring to sex, drugs, or rock and roll. The f Thank you. The f <laughs> no interruptions. The first, the first library, which, as we heard, was built, or the, the libraries that uh, Andrew Carnegie started in Dunfermline in 1883, he required the recipients of his philanthrop philanthropy to demonstrate two key things. Firstly, that the community was in need of the facility, which in the 19th century of Scotland was possibly self-evident, and secondly, that services would always be free. The extraordinary revolution that Carnegie created has then been clearly changed over time, but it is just as important as ever as libraries have been transformed from the silent spaces of reading into bustling hubs of activity covering all aspects of community living. It has been pointed out, libraries host free classes and events for local people that would be unavailable to many were it not for the Carnegie model, which became the basis for all the library services in the UK. They run hugely popular and successful activities for children and schools, and they're often the focal point for local communities. This is particularly true in many rural communities, which might have seen the reduction of other rural services, such as their post offices, their local shop, or their police counter. Even the library bus is eagerly awaited in so many rural communities, and they can give much-needed comfort to many elderly citizens who would not otherwise find it easy to move further afield. In other words, libraries have a huge social value that can never be underestimated. Clearly, there has been a seismic shift brought about by the internet. Today, the majority of us carry the entirely, entirety of human knowledge in our pockets and bags. Smartphones and tablets mean that we have instant access to information and seemingly limitless supply of library books, ava of books available at our fingertips, wherever we are. The nature of our need for libraries may be changing, as is demonstrated on a weekly basis as a meeting place, community centre, learning hub, indeed coffee shop, swimming pool, local libraries continue to play a vital role for communities across Scotland. Far from the proliferation of digital communication being a major stumbling block, it's actually embraced the wholeheartedly the Scottish library system, with many people's first interaction with the internet taking place in a library. Indeed, I would argue strongly that libraries have become more, not less attractive as a result. Notwithstanding that, there are pressures on libraries, and these are often coming from local authorities who are finding it increasingly difficult to maintain library facilities on the same basis as before, where this is set against spending restraints. How many times have we heard members of the public raise concerns when first cutbacks that are made 
in a local authority area are those which are not seen to be frontline, like museums, libraries, or galleries. This is not just about low-income families accessing the facilities, but everybody using them. As I've said before, they are the hub of local, rural, and urban life. Thanks. I now call on Liam MacArthur to be followed by Christine Graham. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I join others in warmly congratulating Colin Beattie on uh, bringing the de debate? I hope he was not uh, subject to a late fine for the scheduling of the debate on the 7th of February, uh, finding ourselves far from home. Um, both James Dornan and I uh, pitched up at the Blantyre li uh, Library in Malawi. It was unfortunately a Sunday and closed, but I think uh, our, our note of solidarity did not go uh, unremarked upon. Despite the de delay, I think it's important we're having this debate, as Colin Beatty himself acknowledged, uh, at a time where I think a lot of libraries across um, the, the United Kingdom feel uh, or are under threat of either cuts or closures. I think it's important we acknowledge the value and indeed celebrate the contribution that public and indeed school libraries make. In a, in a digital age, the, the question of the relevance of libraries, I think, has been raised, even uh, the, 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 the value of books themselves, including possibly even the noble tome the former First Minister is preparing to unleash on an expectant uh, world very shortly. Um, the Orkney Library and Archive, I think, provides an utterly compelling answer uh, to that question. It is one of the most successful libraries, and I understand the oldest, founded in 1683 as uh, Bibliotheque of Kirkwall. It is embedded in the local community, uh, but I think it's done a great deal to enhance its reputation, not just nationally, uh, but internationally. Uh, the examples uh, underpinning this are certainly the, the, the history and, and heritage resources it has available, the innovative use it has made of social media, and I'll touch on that uh, in a moment, and the real focus on providing the highest levels of customer service, which I think are reflected probably in libraries across the country. And access is absolutely fundamental to the role that libraries play uh, across the country. The physical uh, access is important. I remember the, the library in both Kirkwall and in Stromness providing a bit of a bolt hole uh, from, the, uh, from the elements. Um, you may come in uh, out of the rain and, and invariably stay longer than uh, you intended. But delivering library services in an archipelago, I think, provides uh, particular challenges. Uh, and I think it is to the great credit both of the libraries in, um, in Orkney but also in Shetland that they've been doing this for over 60 years now. I remember uh, when I was younger that the black plastic library boxes being delivered uh, to the house uh, were eagerly uh, anticipated treasure troves. Uh, 60 years on, in collaboration with their counterparts in Shetland, uh, Orkney Library undertook 24 islands in 24 hours with authors Anne Cleves and Lynn uh, Anderson uh, leading the way. Uh, things have moved on, obviously. The web -based, um, use of web-based models and e-books is a modern approach to delivering uh, services in the community uh, I represent. And while it may not be as exciting as the arrival of the small black uh, boxes, um, I think it is probably more practical. And this rising to the challenge of the digital age is uh, reflected in the, in the move to reach out to, to new users. The Orkney Library has award-winning uh, social media presence, in, including two golden twits. Uh, I think special mention to Stuart Bain uh, for his efforts in tweets and Facebook posts. Be invidious perhaps to draw out one, but I will do so. Uh, the 12 Days of Christmas recently culminated uh, with Steve Coogan's autobiography being tucked inside the autobiography of a former Doctor Who actor uh, under the title A, a Partridge in a Pertwee. Um, uh, access, uh, though, goes beyond simply that to, to, to books. It acts as a hub for book bug sessions, for one-to-one -one IT tuition. Uh, it's, it's been used as a hub uh, for health visitors delivering health checks uh, and uh, promoting early years developmental activities. The partnerships with the Orkney Talking Newspaper, Orkney Family History Society and the George Mackay Brown Fellowship I think demonstrate the breadth and the reach of the library. In concluding, and to avoid any accusation on my part uh, of bias, can I conclude with the quote from Lynn Anderson in a love letter to Kirkwall Library. I'm sure she didn't mean to exclude Stromness, so I'll, I'll replace Kirkwell with Orkney. Orkney has embraced the future of books with enthusiasm and determination. Orkney Library is, to my mind, everything that is wonderful about libraries and the services they bring to people. So can I thank Colin Beattie once again for giving Parliament an opportunity to put on, collective, on record our collective gratitude for the contribution libraries and their staff make to communities right across the country. Thank, thank you. you. I call on Christine Graham to be followed by Claire Baker. 
Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too congratulate Colin Beattie on securing this debate. Incidentally, my second speech in a debate on libraries in as many weeks, but I don't mind. I have loads of time for libraries. In fact, I passed Higher English Grade A, I boast, through coming across critiques on Shakespeare in Blackhall Library. And then in my early days in Woodmill Fife, where with the librarian, the redoubtable Dorothy Devlin, we took the mystery and the horror and fear out of libraries as many young people were inhibited from crossing them. And that was 40 years ago, and of course a lot has changed since then. I'm still an aficionado of libraries, though now mostly through my surgery visits to Newton Grange and Gore Bridge on the first Friday of each month, free ad. Newton Grange, with the flowers on the counter, take note, Gore Bridge, you haven't got any flowers, this month had its Burston Books project, and incidentally also celebrates its 50th anniversary. This project was set up in Mayfield Library in Colin Beattie's constituency with NHS funding and was headed by Isabel Allen, Mayfield Library Manager, with input from staff and pupils from the primary. Now, the aim of the project was to support and interest particularly boys aged six to eight years whose reading ages were below par and who generally would give books a body slide. So what is it? In Newton Grange, there are 20 themed canvas bags full of goodies with a range of topics, deadly creatures, horrible histories, mental maths, terrible T-Rex, mobile monsters. I want to get one myself. And it's not just books inside these canvas bags, but themed related toys, DVDs and so on. It's a real Santa Claus present put into the library. The library service provides funds for these materials from its own budget. It's a great idea. And not wishing to stereotype, girls can get the bags too. As for Gore Bridge, and I look forward to their new carpeting, I promised I would say that, it was humming with activity too. From the computer room, the mid-space people, such as Fiona Sharp, was at the ready to advise on services locally on mental health and well-being. Jonathan Coward, who was there to provide support for vulnerable people affected by welfare reform, who don't have computers at home already referred to by Colin Beattie, but to help them to use the library's PC suites. And of course, it was me sitting among the autobiographies and meeting constituents and reading some of the autobiographies when it was a bit slack for business. Now, I want to put on record, therefore, my personal thanks to the librarians at both for their good humour, and in Newton Grange, the cup of coffee and the biscuit, take note again, Gorebridge, and looking after me and everyone who steps over their thresholds. And you can see all those good people and the facilities on my Facebook pages. I also want to congratulate for once Midlothian Council's commitment to continuing to support these libraries, which are community centres. And I have a message for the member and for the other speaker, for Liam MacArthur, with regard to the forthcoming former First Minister's autobiography. I understand there are currently no plans to put in sex, drugs or rock and roll. He assures me he's leaving that for the sequel. Thank you for that vibrant speech. Now call on Claire Baker to be followed by Stuart Stevens. Um, thank you, President Officer. I'd like to start by thanking Colin Beattie for bringing this debate forward and offering us the opportunity to discuss the important role our libraries play. They not only ensure everyone can take pleasure, regardless of their economic situation and reading, but also broaden our personal education and ensure access to our culture. They encourage a love of reading, they offer choice and depth to the reader, not only what's on the shelves, but also by ordering and requesting books from all across Scotland. Um, National Library Day is a day to celebrate all that libraries give us. Libraries play a huge part in family life and World Library Day gives us the chance to recognise that and celebrate everything that they offer. Uh, my local library was very important to me as a child and I can remember the excitement and anticipation of reaching 14 and being able to move up to the adult section of the library. I maybe wasn't looking for the same books as uh, my colleague Mr uh, Cameron. But, um, and as a student at Edinburgh University, I was able to use the National Library of Scotland. And we should all also recognise today the importance of the National Library, not only our local services, but also what the National Library gives us. Um, libraries have changed and modernised, and even in an increasingly digital and technological age, with many more entertainment and relaxation choices available to us, libraries are still hugely important. 
And in Fife, we've seen investment into our libraries with the refurbished Kirkcaldy and galleries opening a few years ago, which has created a, a fantastic multi-purpose space with a gallery, a library, a cafe, a museum, and also family history services. And of course, the first of Carnegie's public libraries was in his birthplace, Dunfermline, and opened in 1883. The building uh, displays a stylized sun outside with a carved motto, let there be light at the entrance. And it has currently been invested in for the 21st century. And it's a great example of our continuing commitment to libraries. But there is more to do across Scotland in terms of improving access to e-books in particular through our lending service and also Wi-Fi access in libraries, which can be quite patchy across the country. So how do we ensure a culture of reading in Scotland and be able to reap the educational benefits that brings the individual, our society and our economy? Um, last week we had uh, World Book Day and like many parents across the country I was pulling together a favourite character outfit and costume. And events like World Book Day do promote and celebrate reading, and it's so wonderful to see children enjoying reading. And over the summer, lots of libraries also offer the Big Reading Challenge, which encourages reading outside of the school term. Um, in Southern Australia, they have a very successful reading challenge that's increased in popularity over the years. Um, and it's something that Labour would look to introduce um, as a First Minister's reading prize. And this would encourage school children to read 12 books at least throughout the school year. In South Australia, this has meant 95% of all schools take part. There's almost a 50-50 split in the number of boys and girls who take part in the challenge. And the cost is, is minimal. In 2013, the budget for the programme was 340000 And due to the uptake, this was less than $3 per student. Um, evidence from across the world shows a correlation between general reading and academic achievements. And we need to help inspire our children into the habit of reading and to using libraries. And the knock-on benefits for the Scottish book scene are very positive. And we should also be looking at ways in which we can support our Scottish publishing sector and um, through the procurement process. And um, presiding officer, public sector finances are under severe pressure and local authorities and cultural trusts will be looking at the services they provide. Um, I would urge them to exercise caution around the library service. That's not to say there shouldn't be any change. They need to look at the viability of the library, the borrowing numbers, and look at better ways of delivering services. But Libraries are vital, they are publicly funded, they're accessible, they remove educational barriers and they should be valued now and well into the future. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> Finally, Stuart Stevenson, after which I call the Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, to this annual uh, meeting of Bookaholics Not Very Anonymous. Um, and I'm very privileged to be part of uh, that group. Now, libraries, of course, are a source of information. Uh, that's uh, very valuable. But they're also something that protects our heritage on a long-term basis. Um, that that, that uh, it's uh, no accident that uh, totalitarian regimes and extremists generally, one of the first things they go for uh, is uh, books and for libraries. And uh, ISIS have destroyed uh, 100,000 books in Mosul uh, in the recent uh, weeks. And... Uh, in April 2003, uh, the National Library and Archive of Iraq uh, was all but lost, hundreds of thousands of books. And during World War II, one of the first targets of the Japanese when they went to China uh, was to destroy books. Over a million books and documents were destroyed, and of course the Nazis in the 1930s uh, notoriously burnt books with which they disagreed. So books are radical. Books are extreme, books are highly varied, and we should value them in all their variety because they tell us about where we come from, they inform about where we're going to go. Now, I personally, like many other members, I'm sure, uh, use libraries considerably when I have my surgeries in Bucky and my surgeries in Fraserburgh. It's the local library that plays host to us. And uh, while I'm waiting, I can pop next door and see what's going on. I can read the newspapers that the libraries get. And, of course, I can dip into books. But surprisingly, um, no one so far has mentioned the National Library of Scotland, which is a absolutely... Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm 
it has been signalled that I was not listening correctly. Um, I have my reading card uh, here with me. Uh, disappointingly, I note that it's due for renewal on General Election Day. I have a suspicion I may not manage to get along that day to, uh, to renew it. But when you go into places like the National Library of Scotland, you have almost unique opportunities to uh, find information you'll get nowhere else. I'm very interested in genealogy, both my own and other people's. I know that my great-grandfather uh, earned £70 a year in 1862 because he was a missionary for the Scottish Coast Mission. And there seem to be only four pieces of paper left about that institution, and one of them is in the National Library of Scotland, the annual report. It shows how much he was earning. So that was very good. Archives and libraries go hand in hand. My great, great, great grandfather, I've got a tiny bit of paper showing he served in the Navy. I was able to go to the public record office at Kew and get the ship's logs from 1780 uh, when he was serving on HMS Medway. Now, let's have a wee think about the electronic world. The National Library for Scotland is doing a great deal to address the issue of the transient nature of so much of our electronic information. And I invite uh, Liam MacArthur uh, to think very carefully about whether the modern electronic world is a better one than the paper world to which we have been used to. Um, I sit in a bath whenever I can with a cup of tea and a book in my hand. I can assure you that my wife sweats less when I drop a book in the bath because a hairdryer is all that's needed to remedy it, but dropping an e-book in the bath is another matter altogether. Not because of the electrical implications, the e-book tends to suffer a bit. I congratulate uh, Colin Beatty on giving us this opportunity to, close, to think easy. about literature and libraries. I hope that we'll hear some interesting things from the Minister about the future security of our library services. Many thanks. Uh, Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop to close on behalf of the Government. Uh, Presiding Officer, I also would like to congratulate Colin Beattie for securing this member's uh, debate and what was a very eloquent contribution. Uh, the motion highlights the great work that libraries do, not just on National Libraries Day, but all the year round. And as Christine Graham pointed out, this is the second opportunity the Parliament has, ha has taken to debate libraries in recent weeks, following James Dornan's motion about Langside Library's 100th anniversary on the 3rd of February. And I welcome the opportunity to continue that discussion and also reflect on the passion that members uh, have for their local libraries and of course Stuart Stevenson has given us an international perspective and reflected on the power of books and also to reflect on the cultural outrage of the destruction of libraries in times of conflict and war. The Scottish Government places uh, great importance on our public libraries because they bring real social benefits to people and communities. Cameron Buchanan reflected on the Carnegie legacy of the past. Uh, but it's also uh, important that we emphasise that libraries are changing, now, not just the carpets in Gore Bridge, uh, but also the five refurbishment that Claire Baker referred to. And libraries offer crucial support to help people help themselves, to support li literacy, digital participation, learning, employability, health, culture and leisure, to improve the quality of people's lives and support them to engage in the democratic process. And Zala Malik also talked about the Macmillan Partnership, a very important new, de new development. Stuart Maxwell talked about the example of Barhead Library, but he also raised the important point about attainment in school libraries, and I undertake to ensure that the Education Minister does respond to him. But I, I, I want to emphasise that we do see school libraries as a vital part of supporting our literacy uh, campaigns. As noted in the motion today, um, there have been uh, fewer closures of libraries in Scotland than the rest of the UK. Uh, we should recognise uh, that libraries in Scotland are actually performing extremely well. In fact, have won the UK's Library of the Year accolade at the Bookseller Industry Awards for the last three years. Midlothian won last year, uh, an amazing achievement for the second smallest mainland local authority in Scotland. All this is great news, but I'm sure members will agree that there is no room for complacency. The Scottish Government recognises how important libraries are in delivering national priorities, and the specific government support for public libraries is through funding for the Scottish Library Information Council, SLIC, to offer leadership to the sector. Uh, SLIC uh, also distributes our £500,000 a year public library improvement fund that is available to contribute to local projects. 
We're also supporting SLIC as it works with COSLA and other partners to develop a strategy for public libraries in Scotland. Now, this strategy group is chaired by the Chief Executive of the Carnegie UK Trust, Martin Evans. And building the strategy is an opportunity for local authorities and other partners to agree a clear vision for the future of library services. And the strategy is due to be published later this year. And I'll also identify to undertake the scope in relation to the school library issue brought up by Stuart Maxwell. SLIC has refreshed its quality assurance toolkit that allows local authorities to self-evaluate their library services. How good is our public library service? That was published in August 2014. It's designed to recognise the requirements of the public library service and its role in supporting other areas of policy. And it forms part of how good is our culture and support, which local authorities use to assess performance in cultural services. Libraries have a crucial role to play in helping to tackle inequalities and empowering communities. I thought Lee, Lee MacArthur touched on that as part of his contribution well. And the support that libraries give to develop digital skills is a great example of community engagement. Libraries provide equipment and internet access for those who don't have it and also offer training for those who are unsure of how to get online. And these opportunities are about finding new ways of creating new partnership and ventures, exploring new ways to reach out and inspire new audiences in our communities are very important. And the library sector is very engaged in developing a vision for the sector through the work on the strategy. And a really exciting project that the Scottish Library and Information Council announced on National Libraries Day is this pilot to give every child in Scotland an automatic library membership card. The Every Child a Library Member pilots will take place in partnership with local authorities. And I'm delighted to say that 30 local authorities have expressed interest in being involved. So I think that's a rather big pilot, but obviously we'll have the pilot. But uh, I think the interest from 30 so far, I think, shows you the enthusiasm there is. The development of the pilots is still at an early stage, but the intention is to give a completed library card to children at various stages from birth to primary school. The pilots are being supported, indeed. Graham. I could narrow the field down from 30 to 1. I suggest you start with Midlothian, as it's done so well with awards over the years and is the smallest council area. Well, I, I think in being generous to all the other areas, we should share the, share the opportunity. The pilots are supported by the Public Library Inf uh, Improvement Fund, uh, running next financial year. They will encourage uh, Scotland's children and parents to enjoy books from an early stage. And that builds on our existing commitment to encourage reading and improve literacy standards through two initiatives that I have launched as a, a government minister, the, the Play, Talk and Read that's been running for some time, and obviously Book Week Scotland. And of course, we've just newly announced the Read, Write, Count initiative. So National Libraries Day is one of many opportunities when libraries can promote their activity and host special events. Another example is World Book Day, which was last week on Thursday, uh, 5th of March, referred to by Claire Baker. I had a bit of a problem. Uh, my 10-year-old doesn't like getting dressed up, so I had to ask him what he wanted to do to help celebrate. He decided to put on a hoodie and be Percy Jackson from The Lightning Thief uh, uh, stories, but I thought that was a very creative way of dealing with a, a challenge that he had, as well as ce celebrating World Book Day. Um, obviously, there's opportunities uh, to encourage um, visits with author events, school and nursery visits, and special book uh, sessions. And World Book Night on the 23rd of April uh, is the next significant day to spread the love of reading, um, along with World Book Day, National Libraries Day, and Book Week Scotland. So I think we should all get behind these initiatives, use the opportunities for celebration. And libraries have been very important important in the Book Week Scotland initiative in particular. It's been running since 2012 and that's a, a very important initiative where in 2014 we saw uh, approximately 481 events in libraries across all local authority areas attended by 17,000 people and Musselburgh Library was also one of five libraries to achieve a commissioned artwork as part of Book Week Scotland 2014. Now, I've said this before, but one thing that libraries could do better is to market themselves, remind people of all they have to offer and what they do for people all over the country. I'm sure that the library strategy will help them do that. And in terms of uh, other activities and how we can demonstrate the value of that, SLIC has developed a Scottish reading strategy with local authorities as well. And there's a, a calendar of events that allows SLIC and libraries to maximise their impact on audiences. And as this motion uh, recognises, libraries are an important and indeed powerful part of our communities. Their offer is universal, democratic, and we should be very proud to support them as a cornerstone of our society. Many thanks. And I now suspend this meeting until 2.30.